that good old and we're going
Mama can't do it for us. Daddy can't do it for us. All right. All right. But I thank you, Father, that Mama and Daddy did bring me yes, to church. Yes, oh, yeah. To show us and give us an opportunity yes, uh -huh. to help us understand that there's a better way. Yes, yes, yes. But there's an opportunity yes, to see you in Jesus. Yes, sir. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for this church, Heavenly Father. Thank you. Thank we thank you, Heavenly Father, for just being a mission on for you, Heavenly Father. Yes, sir. Thank you. We got a job to do, Heavenly Father. Amen. Yes, sir. Heavenly Father, we have to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. For the other night, Heavenly Father, the storm came. Thank you. Some of us slept through it. Yes. And some of us did. <laughs> but I guarantee you, the next one we saw. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But damn it, that was done, Heavenly Father. Yeah. But your hand's protection was around us, Heavenly Father. Yes, sir. Yes, if we were to wake up now, Heavenly Father, your hand's protection. Yes, that ought to be an acceptance yes, to us, Heavenly Father. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. That you watch over us oh, yes. day and night. Yes, thank you. Your angel was dispatched yes. around. Yes. yes. He didn't think happen that you didn't know what was going to happen. That's right. Yes. We didn't know all the extent. All right. But you did. Yes. yes. So that right there to be an example for yes, us. Yes, no. Yeah. That's enough. That's how you that you protected thank us in the Thank you. Thank you. All throughout our lives in the Father. Thank you. Things that be going on around us. Yes. We know a thing about. Yeah. But your love oh, yeah. surrounds us. Yes. yes. And we ought to be thankful. Thank you. Lord. And be thankful. Yes. Put our eyes open to a new day. Yes. The first thing come out of our mouth, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. For allowing me to see another day. Yes. Thank you, Jesus, for your love, your unconditional love. Thank you, Lord. And then after we say that, we need to give out go out and live. Yes. Like you said. Yes, sir. All right. Show us compassion mm -hmm. to other people. Yes. Showing that love. My yes. Love. Yes. Being humble. And I also ask for forgiveness. Being right. 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 accountable for our actions. Yeah. 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 Because the only about some people will see is us. Yeah. Yeah. So in that, we need to be an example. Yes, sir. Because before we ask you to come into our lives, right. we live any kind of way we want to live. All right. All right. Amen. Right. Tell the truth. But some of us took time yes, 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 to throw their arms around us to welcome us in and show us a better way. Yes, sir. Yeah. So what better can we do to go somebody else? All, all right. right. Yeah. Not to condemn them. All right. Not to put them down. Yes, sir. Because we all have come short. Yes, sir. We all have seen. Yes. Yes. Right. So how can I point a finger at you? Three of them point back at me. Yes. All right. All right. So open my arms up. Not talk about you. But what can you in? So yeah, you done wrong. That's all right. God yes. forgive you. Yes. All right. That's what Jesus was on that cross for. Yes. That's when he died. But then he rose. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Waiting for us to come to. So we need to be a beacon of light. Yes, Lord. To everybody around us, Heavenly Father. Yes, sir. Heavenly Father, we need to go out and be a, a light to somebody. Yes. Not just yes. in this church. Yes. Yes. Not just on Sunday morning. All right. All right. Monday through Saturday we live. Right. Amen. Amen. Yes, and I yes. thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Lord. For giving us the opportunity. Because at some point, our eyes will close. Thank you, Lord. And we got the nail before you here, Father. Give me the yes. of our actions, yes. of our thoughts. Yes. But before that time comes, yes. we thank you, Father, for the children that we got in this church. Yes. 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 We thank you, Father. Yes. So we need to be an example to them. Yes. To train them up, to teach them. Yes. Yes. And be thankful that church is going to continue on. Yes, Lord. Because we look around here, Father, the church is not full all around the kids. All right. As a matter of fact, it's not full people. All right. All right. Oh, yeah. So, it is this thing that we need to take and be a, a, a joyful time to come to your house and worship and pray. Amen. Because somewhere in the world, we can't go into your house and worship and pray. All right. We can't say Jesus' name openly. We can't worship you openly in different parts of this world. So, we have to be thankful and be smiling that we can say Jesus. Uh -huh. We ask you to follow the past stands with this morning, Heavenly Father. To give him the word ahead of Father. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we open our heart, yes. open our ears to receive the word. Yes. yes. We thank you, Father, for his teaching. Thank yes. you, my Lord. Thank you. Because Heather Father, some preachers that stand in that pool are not teaching the right thing. My Lord. So we thank you. Thank you. But we got a pastor yes. that is teaching us the, the doctrine of the Bible. Yes. The truth. Yes. The word. Yes. And I thank you for being here, Father. Yes, sir. Thank He's you. lifting him up, Heavenly Father. Yes. Yes. 
In Jesus' name I pray. Jesus name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Right, brother. Thank you. to Bernie. have that kind of uh, assurance. You shouldn't be wasting time thinking whether or not you're going to make it in. You ought to know. You're going. Praise the name of the Lord. 
I give honor to God who is the director in my life, um, to my pastor, and to all of you in the name of Jesus. I stand to give you devotion, a little something something, to let you know that you're in the presence of the Lord. Isn't that what devotion is? Somebody help me. Let's go to the book of Romans, chapter 3. We're going to touch up on verse 23 and 24. Very familiar set of scriptures, but I believe sometimes we forget. And we operate not like he would want us to. So I'm going to stand on my hind legs and try to get you directed back in the right direction. Say amen if you're there. If not, look up. (coughs) Romans 3 and 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. Listening and reading in Sunday school, I think I'll stay in the same stream. Face failure with faith. Make sure you understand that. First of all, you're going to fail. You're going to fall down. But how do we get back up? Faith in the one that's holding you. So face failure with faith. When he says that, he means all, no exceptions. The standard is God's glory, God's righteousness. Makes no difference if you miss it by an inch or a mile. You may not understand what I'm talking about. I don't mind explaining. If two men are running to catch a plane. Have you been in that place before? It ain't no fun. (laughs) One man misses his flight by an hour. Another man misses his by a minute. Who's in the worst shape? I think you're with me. They both missed their flight, right? Okay. So it does not matter if you're better than your neighbor. The neighbor is not the standard. The standard is God. And as you remember, the scripture said we all fall short. I said something then. You may not have caught it. Justification is a contract, a concept, meaning that God is in his courtroom. And he has pronounced that all your charges are forgiven. You are innocent of all those charges. You know, when God's in the courtroom and he says you're innocent, it doesn't matter what anybody else says. It's just like you were never charged in the first place. Theologians talk about imputation. That is where Jesus' record is credited to your account. Yeah. Man, you didn't understand that, did you? He got cattle on a thousand hills, and you broker than Job's turkey. But you can come to him, and he'll give you what you need. May not be all that you want, but he'll give you what you need. Our redemption is in Jesus Christ. So therefore, without him, we're in bondage. We're in jail, locked up, forgotten about. But then Jesus came, and he took the blame and got you out of jail. I learned something a long time ago. Because you fall down. That does not define who you are. (laughs) 
because you fall down, that doesn't mean you're broke and can't be fixed. God already knows. He loves you in spite of that. You got to face your failures with faith and God's goodness. How do I know this? Because while you're standing there, he already knows what's coming. You graduated from high school. You graduated from college. There's stuff on the way. But God has already laid down exactly what you need to make it through. He'll tell you just like he told Joshua, arise and go. You and all your people to the land that I've given you. There's no condition. There's no fine print. There's no yada, yada, yada. It is what it is. You know, the thing about that promised land that God gives all of us, it does not depend on your perfection. It depends on God's perfection. As long as you know you're in the hands of God, there is no crushing defeat. I don't care if you did it or somebody else did it to you. God still got you. My Bible tells me that the steps of a good man are directed by God. I'll make it a little simple. Because you know God is happy with each step we take in his direction. If they fall, it's not fatal. For the Lord holds you with your hand. To face your failures... Put your faith in the one who's always faithful. Father God, we thank you today. We thank you for your goodness toward us. Even though at our best, we're something that no one else even wants to touch. But Father, you loved us first. So therefore, the way I feel, I got to show love back. I may not be the best that I could be all the time, but I'm working at it, Lord. Thanks be to you, I have that mind that stays with you. Father, touch them today. Let them know how much you love them in spite of what's going on. That you will open up a door, open up a window. You'll open it up and bless them. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
If you got one, pull it out. <laughs> Devotional reading. Philippians 2 and 5 is where we're going to start it. Isn't it good to smile in the house of the Lord? Yes, sir. You smile at other places, <laughs> smile in here. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being the Son of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, of the things in heaven, and the things in earth, and the things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We're going to do a little education because kidney disease affects African Americans more than any other race. And it's for a couple different reasons. One reason is because of heredity. There is a gene that it's found that predisposes you to chronic kidney disease. Also, as African Americans, we are more at risk for hypertension right. and diabetes. Yeah. That also predisposes us to this condition. So first, let's talk about what chronic kidney disease is. It is a condition where your kidneys lose their ability to filter waste and fluid <coughs> from our body. If this does not happen, we will retain fluid and we will have swelling in mainly our lower extremities, but if bad enough, we can retain it in our abdomen and our arms in all of your body really if it gets bad enough so we need this to take out the toxins we urinate out our toxins and if that process does not happen we will become septic and that can be a life-ending situation mm -hmm. So, on the forefront of that, when we have diabetes and hypertension, we really need to manage those conditions. Amen. And it is easier said than done. When you have hypertension, you have to watch your diet. You have to exercise. You have to take your medicines. And as a home health nurse, I see every day that that is just not happening. <laughs> for one reason or another, we do not do what we need to do to manage those conditions. Diabetics, we like to eat. And as African Americans, we pretty much, most of us eat the whole hog. And so, <laughs> that is a problem. <laughs> so, we need to watch how we eat. We Amen. need more fruit, more vegetables, more lean meats, and water. We need to drink way more water than we consume in a day's time. The coffee, the soft drinks, and all of that stuff, even the diet soft drinks, has a component that is bad for our <coughs> kidneys. So we really need to drink at least 64 ounces of water a day to flush out our kidneys. We need to take care of ourselves. Water has another you know, reason. We're mostly made up of water. Water flushes out the kidneys and bacteria. 
for women because of the closeness of us you know we have to drink water so that we don't get UTIs because it starts out as a bladder infection and if it is not taken care of, then it becomes a kidney infection, which we call pyelonephritis. Repeated UTIs damages the kidneys over time. For men and women, men, they have a condition that calls BPH, you know, as the years go on, that just happens. The body just seems to <laughs> stop working the way that it should. <laughs> so, <laughs> We really need to take a look at that because studies show that African Americans are predisposing, are, we are predisposing ourselves to these conditions. It's just in our genes. And we need to take better care of ourselves so that we can stay here longer. We can stay here longer and we can do more. You know, they already know that we're powerful. And if they can't get rid of us one way, they'll do it the other. So we have to be active in our health care. Don't wait for the doctor to tell you to do this and do that. Take care of yourself. We need to be proactive so that we may live. You know, we all have an appointed day and time, and the Lord don't need no help from us. So we need to just take care of ourselves so that we can stay here and be about the Lord's business. Amen. We want to thank, thank her for that information. I think she was being nice in some of the things she said. Uh, she probably could have said it a little harsher. We thank her for sharing that information. Amen. I'm a living witness to whatever, everything that uh, she just said. Amen. Because I spend. 11 and a half hours a day on a dialysis machine because my kidneys do not work. Amen. So, amen. I want to tell you, it's not fun. It's a hindrance to whatever you try to do. But God is good. Amen. Now, I don't know why they do that. They told me some announcements to make. Didn't write them down, and I have no idea what I'm supposed to be announcing. Uh, yeah, y'all gonna have to start writing that down and hand it to me. Uh, I tell you what, who who had the announcement? Yeah, thank you. Make your announcement, Sister Wanita. That's it. Amen. All right. All right. Like somebody else had one. Oh, yeah. Amen. We're going to feed the kids, and if it is something else for those of y'all sit here and want to help us out, you're welcome to partake of the room here if you will. Amen. Amen. All right. Somebody else? Got two. Two. Uh, good morning. Uh, I need to see these people before you go home. I need to get a, a, a picture of you. Who is it? Trey Crockett? Is that right, Miss Octavia? Trey Who is Trey Crockett? I got Deasia Crockett, 
Jaden Keener, uh, JV in the sound room, uh, Xavier Hildred, Aiden, and Demetri Crockett and Kylie. I need to see you guys after church, okay? All right. Right quick. Then my other announcement is today the district men and women's program is over at New Zion at 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Felton Bridge and Morning Star of Elder Rady would be our guest. That's right. No. Another menu, so you know what to bring me. Yeah. Most of everybody has been contacted. There's a few that have not been told about next Sunday. Thank you. Amen. 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 So I never would remember all them. <laughs> Anything else? Like I say, we do want to just emphasize again next Sunday at 2 o'clock our annual youth day and then the three nights revival that will follow. Uh, we're looking forward to having a great time. Uh, this is why I know it's be the first time Reverend Bridget has been here, uh, who's going to do the Youth Day. And of course, Reverend Wilson did our revival for us last year. And so he'll be back with us again uh, this year. So we want to look forward to having a, a great time. I know that it's spring break, and some people might be doing here, there, or the other, but uh, though you're not going anywhere, you got somewhere to go. And that's right here at Mount Zion. Amen. 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 So we're looking forward to having a great week. Uh, starting that Sunday and going through Wednesday night. Amen. Amen. All right, birthday. Okay. Good morning again. Um, we would like to recognize if we have any birthdays today or this week coming up. Stan, somebody, Ooh. anybody. Amen. Oh, that one.
birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Wednesday. 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 All right. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. All right. Amen. All right. Reverend God, our Father, and Jesus Christ, our Savior, the Holy Spirit, comfort and guide, we give honor to all of you who are assembled here. We want to thank uh, Reverend Napa for that devotion. Amen. Thank the choir this morning. Amen. Uh, for the songs. I got our youth ushers on the floor. Amen. They're keeping everything in order. We thank God for them. The brethren who did prayer worship this morning, we just thank God for all of you. I want to thank God for those of you who, who make the effort and come out to be a part of Sunday school. Amen. Amen. We want to encourage you if you don't Amen. come to Sunday school. Amen. Amen. To please start coming uh, to Sunday school. Uh, you, you miss it out on part of your day's worship uh, if you don't come to uh, Sunday school. Amen. Again, we thank God for any visitors we have in the house today. Thank God for you coming out and sharing with us uh, on this Lord's day. What a blessing Amen. it is Amen. just to be alive, yes, yes, yes. Yes, especially to be alive and to be in a place where God meets us Amen. in order that we can tell him thank you. Thank you. Amen. Uh, we've been working on faith for a long time, a long time. Today, we're going to still talk a little about it, but it's time to take a little break. Amen. And, and we just want to talk about the goodness of God. We're going to call this a praise break today. That, 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 that we can just thank God for, for being God. Amen. From Daniel chapter 3 and verse 15 is our text. Daniel 3 and 15. Amen. Is where we're going to read from. And we're not even going to read the whole verse. No, we just want to look at the latter portion of this verse. And, uh, we all know the story of those three Hebrew boys. Amen. We know that story. Uh, our young people today, that's for you because you didn't have children, Trey. This is a story about three boys, two, right. three young people, yeah, right. uh, some of them your age, yeah, who took a stand for Christ. Right. Amen. Uh, 
The old preacher used to say, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And these three boys took a stand for Christ. And that's what we're trying to get you in a position where when that day comes, because it's coming, not only for our young people, but for all of us, the day is coming when you're going to have to stand up and let folks know who you believe in. In the Sunday school lesson this morning, Peter said, we need to have an answer for every man that asks us about the hope that we have. If you don't have any hope, you don't have an answer. And what is your hope in? <coughs> Some of us hoping in the wrong thing. So I want us to look at this text. Now, like I say, I'm just, I'm just looking at the last because when, when I read this text and I heard it read and, 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 I, and, I, and something stood out, it's Nebuchadnezzar talking to those three Hebrew boys. And, and he's mad. Uh, the Bible says he was wrong. That means he was upset. 38 hot, whatever you want. Him. He, he, he was mad. And, 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 and in the last few words of that verse 15, he asked him a question. Who is that God? And that, that's the question I want to ask Mount Zion this morning. Who, who is that God? And, and, and just to take a little further in that text, he said, who is that God that shall deliver you? All right. And, and that, that's the question I want to ask. Who is it that's going to deliver us? We, we all know how good God has been. Yes. Yet there are some people in the church who they, they, they never stood up. They never waved their hand. They never clapped. Never say they man. They know how good God has been. But they don't let God know that they know how good God has been. Now, yeah, God knows your heart. He knows what you're thinking. But every now and then, heaven want to hear from you. The psalmist in Psalm 107 and 2 said, The redeemed of the Lord ought to say so. And I'm just wondering today in Bible Zion, is anybody redeemed? Well, what does it mean to be redeemed? It means that you've been bought back from Satan. When you're born in this world, Satan owns you. Amen. Amen. Satan owns you. Yeah. When you're born in this world, uh -huh. David said he was born in sin, yeah. conceived in iniquity. Yeah. When you're born, Satan owns you. Right uh -huh. And unless you get bought back, yeah. he will own you till you die. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so Nebuchadnezzar was asking these boys, <laughs> who is that God? I'm asking my son, who is that God? Do you know who he is? All right. All right. Redeemed of the Lord ought to say so. Now, I'm not a, a loud maker, a shouter, a stand up and clapper, whatever you want to call it. But every now and then, we need to let the Lord know. Amen. That we appreciate what he's done for. And every now and then, we need to just take a break out from whatever it is we're doing. And just tell God, hey, Lord, I sure thank you. May not be what I ought to be. But there anybody in here what they ought to be? Well, don't sit there and act like you are. 
Amen. Amen. Don't put me out here by myself. I know I got y'all coming. And that's why it make it so much better that the Lord know I'm going to let him down. He know I'm going to mess up. He know I ain't going to act right. He know I don't think right. He know I ain't going to say everything right. Yet, he still blesses me. Who is that God that able to look beyond fault and supply need? Who is that God that when I don't even care about it, he watching over me? Who is that God? That, that's what I want to. I'm, I'm about through with my little son. Amen, because the point for the day is, do you know who he is? And if you know who he is, why don't you act like it? Listen, we're in the church now. Ain't, ain't nobody looking at you. Amen. We're in the church now. If you redeem, you ought to say something. Amen. If, if you know, if you know that you know, I'm talking about really, really know that you're saved. That no matter what happens in your life, you're going to heaven when you leave here. <laughs> if you redeemed of the Lord, you ought to be willing to say so. Now, I don't know. I didn't count yet how many folks here. But everybody got a voice. And every voice ought to tell the Lord, thank you. If you can sit down and the Lord done brought you through that flood, done brought you through the fire, done brought you through the storm, and you can sit there and don't say thank you. In the old church, they said, I wouldn't have a religion. That I couldn't feel sometimes. And every now and then, I just want to feel him. I just want him to let me know he's with me. When the, dark, when the night get dark and the day get long and the valley get deep and the mountain get high. As long as I know, I got him on my side. Who is? That God that shall deliver you. Who is it? That do you know him? I know what you heard about him, but do you know him? I ain't talking about grandma's God. I ain't talking about mama's God. I want to know, do you have a God? What has he done for you? Well, Let's look at the list. But just how good God had been to. When I was singing deep in sin, who lifted me? When I didn't have sense enough to pray, who looked out for me? When I went down the wrong road, who put a block in front of me? When, when I was getting ready to say the wrong thing, sometimes he just choked me out. So I couldn't say a thing. Who was it that kept me? Amen. But I needed a job. Who gave me one? Well, I needed a ride. Who made a way for me? When I go to the refrigerator and open it, who, who got the food in there? When I go to my closet, them clothes hanging, where they come from? 
Amen. I don't deserve it. But the God that I see. Oh, he able now. Nebuchadnezzar, what kind of question is that? Who is that God? That God that stepped out of nowhere. Stepped on nothing. And spoke everything into existence. That, that's who that God is. The psalmist. 2410 says, who is that king of glory? The Lord, high and mighty. He is the king of glory. Amen. I tell you what, I'm glad that I serve a king. I might have a president, but I serve a king. Got a governor, but I serve a king. Amen. Who is that king of glory? He's the Lord. Amen. Now, when you say the word Lord, we, we use that word, but what does Lord mean? See, Lord means that I'm following him. He ain't everybody's Lord. Yeah, yeah. Some of y'all, you know him, but he ain't your Lord. Amen. Because if he's your Lord, you're going to follow him. Amen. Yeah, I follow him. Sometimes I get distracted. And I turn to the left, but his staff snatching me back in line. So sometimes I turn to the right, and, and on the other end of that staff, he got a point. Stick me with it. Turn around. A amen. Sometimes I get out of line, but I think that I got a God that knows how to straighten up a line. Who is that God? Who is that God that woke you up this morning? Yeah. Who is it that brought you to Mount Zion? Yeah. Who is that God? Do you know him? Yeah. Do you know him? Yeah. Who is yes, that God? Yeah. Now I told you, I, I didn't have no, 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 no great thought to give to you this morning. Uh, I, I, I'm just glad good, that I serve a God. Right. Like the one I serve. Right. I, I'm just glad that yeah, yeah, look, I'm sickly, feeble. Folks have to help me everywhere I go. But I still got some joy. Oh, I, I ain't glad I'm down, but I'm glad I'm going to get up. I, I ain't glad I'm falling, but I'm glad that when I fall, there's a hand that gets up under me and lifts me back up. Oh, yeah. You know, sometimes in the recesses of my mind, we can think some terrible stuff. Amen. Sometimes we even wonder, is God God? If he is, why? Is he treating me like this? But we got to remember how he treated his own son. And we ain't no better than his own son. So I thank you, Lord, for whatever I have to go through. Thank you, Lord, for whatever I have to climb over. Thank you, Lord, because I know I'm not by myself. <coughs> Nebuchadnezzar wants to know who is that God that shall deliver you. Well, Nebuchadnezzar, I know you're dead and gone, but I want to tell you who he is. He's that same God, amen, that came down through 42 generations. That same God that went to a hill called Calvary. That same God that took every sin I committed, every sin I'm going to commit, and every sin you committed, and every sin you're going to commit, and hung him on the cross, died for your sin. He died for your sin. Who is that God? What other God you ever read about died for your sin? Preacher said that in the Old Testament, 
The sheep died for the shepherd. But in the New Testament, the shepherd died for the sheep. Who is that God that died for your sins? Forgive you for them. Some of that daddy stuff. That stuff you don't even like to think about you used to do. All the stuff you don't even think about that you're doing now. Who is that God? That's able to wash you whiter than snow. Who is that God? I want you to know, I want you to think about who is that God? That's able to love you. That's able to love me. When I don't even love myself sometimes. God still loves me. Who is that God? I never thought about it. Because he didn't have to save you. Amen. He could have saved some good folks. Amen. But he said he didn't come to call the righteous. But the sinners. Amen. I thank you that you came for sinners. Because like Paul, I sometimes I look at myself as being the chief among them. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad that he died for me. I'm so glad he rose for me. So if you want to know who is that God, open up your heart. He's knocking at the door right now. Nebuchadnezzar, you missed out on it. Because you wanted folks to worship you. And you want to know who is that God that was able to deliver you out of his hand. Amen. And I'm glad to let you know I know a God. He's able to deliver you. Whatever you're in right now, God can get you out of it. However bad you think your life is, that however dirty you've been living in, whatever lies you told, whatever you done stole, whatever corner you turned, it don't matter. God is able. Amen. And he will do it. Now I start out by saying some folks have never stood up for God. Some folks have never clapped their hands for God. Some folks have never said amen. Some folks come to church and just sit there. Not realizing the goodness of God. Amen. I tell you what. Again, I go back to Psalm 107 and 2. The redeemed of the Lord ought to say so. If he redeemed you out of the hand of the enemy, amen, you ought to say so. If he plucked you out of the fire, you ought to say so. If he pulled you out of the pit of hell, you ought to say so. You ought to be glad. Amen. Why you want to live here? Die and go to hell. Amen. Amen. When you can die and go to heaven. Yes, what a God we say. Yes, Who is that God? Who is that King of glory? He is the Lord high and mighty. He's the Lord that saved me. And I hope you can look in the mirror and say, Lord, thank you for saving this old raggedy soul of mine. Amen. If you can't say that, the day will be your day. I told you I wasn't going to be but a minute. It's your opportunity to accept him as your Savior. <coughs> In two weeks, we'll be celebrating Easter. Amen. Easter is when we celebrate the day that he got up. But if you never had an Easter in your life, if you don't have a day when he got up in you, amen, then you go ahead and dye you some eggs, eat you some chocolate, and celebrate Easter that way. But if you know he got up in you, 
If you know that he resurrected your dead soul, then you ought to say, thank you, Lord. As we stand over the building, thank you, Lord. We're going to stand the invitation. Door is always open. <coughs> Door is open now. Thank you, choir. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Uh, I, I don't know if I could ever just get it over to you all how good God has. You know, we we, we, we take it for granted. Amen. But God has been mighty good to us. Mighty good to us. I want to thank all those who have been called and checking on me. Amen. Yeah, yeah, I'm struggling a little bit. Whew, I said, I didn't know how you get lonesome by yourself like this. All right. All right. <laughs> I, I be talking to the TV. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> Telling folks, watch out, watch out, look behind you now. Don't go in that room, don't go in there. Hey, man, but we thank God for all that he is doing again. And like I said, we want to be sure that we support our youth Amen. on next week. Amen. Amen. We have some mighty fine youth here in my Zion. Amen. And we are expecting great things from them. Amen. Uh, and but it's up to us to make sure that we can get the most out of them. Yes. Amen. So we just thank God for that. Uh, anything else claim my attention at this time? Amen. Yeah, but you don't run off. <laughs> You sing them, sing them, sing them hard, sing them hard. Yeah, sing them hard. Yeah, now remember, Miss Sandra needed some pictures of, of some of the youth uh, immediately following uh, uh, worship this morning. Amen. All right, again, remember now, you know, our Sunday school lesson this morning. Amen. Those of you who wasn't there, our Sunday school lesson this morning uh, uh, was, was talking to us about how to treat one another in the church. How, how we are to interact with one another, uh, you know, in the church and that, and, and that, and we need to be sure of that because, like I say, uh, we all we got. Amen. 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 Now, now we all we got, Amen. and if we can't get it together, nobody else will be able to get it together. Amen. 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 The church can't pull in one direction. Yeah. How are we gonna expect anybody else to? to help us out and to be a part of this. And I think we are able. We, we serve a God that has been good. If you just, whenever you get ready to act up, that's why I say act a fool. Whenever, whenever you get ready to act up, 
I, I want you to just think about what God has done for you. Yeah. Amen. 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 I mean, you get ready to get somebody to piece of your mind. If you're like me, you better keep all your pieces. <laughs> you just think about how good God has been to you. You think about that, and maybe we can, we, we can, we can treat each other better. Uh, we can interact better. Uh, we can have compassion, I think, with the word that the Sunday school lesson used this morning. Compassion. And we need to have some empathy for each other, especially for our young people. You know? uh, they facing things we didn't face. Amen. Amen. They got some temptations. I know that. Scripture says that uh, nothing new under the sun, but it's not a, a new temptation, just a new way of presenting. And, and, and that's what happened, you know, a new way of presenting. Uh, we didn't have access to things that they have access to. <coughs> we didn't have the we didn't have the freedom that they had. Amen. That they have me now. And all the time freedom ain't a good thing. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you need to be bound so you'll act right. Amen. Uh, and so we just want to continue to be as much and as close to God as we can. Amen. Pray for one another. Amen. You don't have to know what a present problem is to pray for them. I just want to let you know everybody here got a problem. So, so whoever you pray for, you helping them out. Amen. The effectual of forever prayer of a righteous avail it much. As we come to the altar. Amen. We're getting ready to go. Yes, Lord. Here we are. Good job, nurse. Thank you. Bill. As we all pray together, Father, we thank you now for another expression of your love. It's amazing how good you are to us. And Father, we just thank you for it. Now, as we stand around your altar, we're not going to act like everything is 100% with us. Father, we got shortcomings, we got problems, we got situations, we got things that we can't handle, we got things that just happened to us, some things we brought on ourselves, but Father, you said, cast our cares upon you, because you care it for us. So Father, we give them to you now. These little problems, they're your problem. And we expect you to handle them, Father. Because that's what you said you were going to do. And we just believe you at your word. So touch now. Father, somebody worried about a family member? Touch, Father. They worried about a bill? Touch, Father. They worried about some sickness in their own body touch. Because we know you are that God that's able to do all things but fail. So keep us now in your love. Hold us, Father. And we give you all the praise and glory. We redeemed and we say so. Thank you, Lord. 
for our redemption. Thank you for our salvation. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. It is in the mighty name of Jesus, through the power of your Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen. Thank God. Oh, amen. Yes, sir. God bless you, man. Appreciate you, brother. Oh, my goodness. I'll take three of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Oh, yeah. Watch out there. Go ahead and go back to the finance room. Yeah, let me go on out of here. Okay. Well, they got to keep the kids up in there. Uh -oh. They won't be running through. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take you to the chair. All right. How much is that? How much is that? Oh, yeah. Huh? I have to set up over this, I believe. Oh, yeah.